it's Cruz and Jules and I'm in Skagway right now. It's really early in the morning, about 6.30. I'm gonna go catch a train today, the White Pass Rail. Hopefully I'll get some good footage and I'll share that with you and I'll tell you all about it later. Okay, bye. There's cruise news and some travel tools. It's Cruz and Jules, but I'm Hi, it's Cruz and Jules, and I'm back from my White Pass Railway Adventure in Skagway, Alaska. So I haven't been to the West Coast in Canada, or Alaska for that matter, and I was very curious, what did it look like up in the mountains? And really, you don't know unless you go. So I had to book the White Pass Rail. It starts at sea level in Skagway, Alaska, then it travels through Northern British Columbia, and then up into the Yukon Territory. So in the comments below, I'm gonna let you know how much I paid. You'll be traveling back in time aboard parlor cars. Some of them are vintage and some of them are replicas. All of them have large viewing windows and you can go out the back door where there's a viewing platform. Here's a fun fact according to alaska.org. The White Pass and Yukon Route has been designated as an International Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. This puts it in the good company of such landmarks as the Eiffel Tower, the Statue of Liberty, and the Panama Canal. I don't normally book my excursions through the cruise lines directly, but I did this time. It was my first trip to Alaska and I wanted to make sure I did it right. And furthermore, I was traveling solo, so I wanted to be safe and with a group of people that were all from my cruise ship. I was cruising to Alaska on Princess Cruises. And normally when you book an excursion with the cruise line, you generally meet on board in a central area, like the theater or a certain lounge. But in this case, the instructions were to meet on shore at the end of the pier. So that's what I did. I thought it was a little unusual. Someone directed me to the tour bus that was waiting for all of us to board. So here's a funny thing. If you're on the pier, there's train tracks right there. And you can see train carts right there. And the train carts are closer than the tour bus waiting for you. Even though the train station was nice and close, the cruise line probably wanted us all to be together. And also some people have mobility issues. So with that being said, at the end of the tour, they just left us at the train station. Now, when you finish your journey and you're at the train station, you have a choice. You can head back to the ship or you can walk into town. And there is a brothel. So everything went seamlessly when we arrived at the train terminal. Princess Cruises had their own carts. And there were three or four other ships in port that day, and each cruise line probably had their own respective carts as well. So, that, so that's kind of nice because it kept everybody that was traveling on the same ship together. The journey begins when you hop aboard a Gold Rush era narrow gauge railroad. Along the way, you're going to see gorgeous forests, waterfalls, mountains, You'll even see a remote community, such as Fraser, BC. Service runs seasonally, usually from late April till the end of September. It was built during the Gold Rush from 1898 to 1900. It took over 35,000 workers and 35 people died in the process. It's an isolated system, so that means it's not connected to any other railroad. Okay, so this part's important. This is where you want to sit if you go on the train. When you get on the train, if you are departing from Skagway and heading northbound, you want to sit on the left-hand side if you're facing forward. Why, you ask? Because the left side has consistently the best views. If you look at the picture, if you're towards the back of the train cart, there was a stove there. And I'm not sure if every train cart has the same setup. So stove in the back corner, and then across from that was the washroom, and the washroom was clean. If you look at the pictures of the seating arrangements, you're going to notice that there's tables there in front of all the benches. This the tour that we were on was served lunch on the train. Make sure you bring your passport. You will need that because you are leaving the U.S. and entering Canada at one point. That point is at Fraser, B.C. 
now if you're on the shorter version of the White Pass Trail, then you'll get off there and turn around. So some people, I do believe, go back on the train and then some will take a bus back. So now take a look at some of the scenery that you get to view outside your window on the White Pass Rail. That includes tunnels. broken bridges. Once again, it will be in total darkness for a few moments. Okay. Oh no, I hope we're yeah, not going over that bridge. This tour really takes you back in time. You learn a lot about the gold rush. cross into Fraser, BC, you keep going and you get up at the Chilkoot Trail. And at the Chilkoot Trail, you go out for a little hike. What I didn't realize was that this area is only accessible if you hike there or by the railway. You're not there for very long, maybe 15, 20 minutes. There's also a museum, but you don't really have enough time to see the museum and go on the hike. So pick and choose what you like to do. There's also washrooms there. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the hike in itself is a bit of a museum. There are things left behind from the gold rush days. You're not allowed to touch anything. It's a very historical area. The other neat thing is here you are, you're in this remote area and it's so beautiful. I was curious whether Lake Bennett covered British Columbia or the Yukon Territory. It turns out it covers both geographically. And we did cross the border at one point. Halfway through our journey, we stopped in Car Cross, and that's where we switched over to the bus. We had about 20 minutes there to relax and grab a drink. So if you want to do the all day train tour, it's probably eight, eight and a half hours. There are two tours available. So one was just it goes straight to Caracross. The other one stops at Lake Bennett. And um, in Lake Bennett, you get out and you can walk around and do a little hike at the Chilkoot Trail. So I would have liked to actually spend more time in Caracross. There's little booths there where you could buy food and different things to do. They do have some options. So I guess it just depends on how much time do you want to spend on the train? And do you want to take the train round trip? or do you want to go back by bus? And the bus route is similar to the train route. It's just obviously by road instead of by rail. And uh, we did see a little bit of extra scenery. To our right hand side, you might notice that there are several pockets of ice that are just filled with like blue and green colors. It's gorgeous. On our left hand side, we're passing some little glacial waterfalls.
here on our right hand side you can notice that fault line pretty well. I have no regrets doing the bus back. I think it was kind of interesting to do that. And we stopped at a little waterfall. Let's talk about the meal. They'll give you a sandwich. You have water. Uh, actually, the cheese was really good. So they had some nice cheese. Like, I think it was like a white cheddar and some grapes and my bag of chips. And I did trade my sandwich with somebody else for an extra dessert bar. So that kind of all worked out in the end. I didn't talk to anyone who actually stopped and had lunch in Care Cross, which I kind of regret. Might be a chicken lunch and then all you can eat homemade donuts. Would I suggest you take the White Pass Rail? Absolutely. It was really cool. The views are unbelievable. It's really easy to get there from the cruise ship. Like you can walk to the train depot. It's no problem. It's just like a couple blocks. If you want to book through the cruise line, go for it. There was lots of room in our cart and everybody had a seat and we weren't all squished in from what i read online there's at least one other supplier that you can book through i believe they have their own train cart and it's at the very end this is one of those situations where i recommend you book your ticket in advance you probably want to do that as early as possible if you really want to go there's going to be a limited amount of seats also, if you book direct with the cruise line, then you know if for some reason your ship misses the port, the cruise line will refund you your money. If you book through a third party, I will find out what their cancellation policy is if your ship doesn't make it to port in time. The other thing is, what happens if the bus breaks down on the way back? Does that tour company guarantee that they're going to get you to the ship back in time? If this video was helpful to you, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to get more interesting videos out to you soon. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel.